On behalf of the entire Mesa Community College at Red Mountain Campus, an incredibly supportive administration and countless dedicated faculty, staff and students, I thank the North American Native Plant Society for the 2014 Founders Conservation Award. It's truly an honour to receive such an award that, and I quote, recognises an individual or group's extraordinary contribution to the conservation, protection or restoration of the native heritage or native flora of North America at the community, regional, provincial, national or continental level. Many individuals at MCC over more than a decade have worked passionately and selflessly to protect, conserve and preserve our campus environment and the many species that now rely on our stewardship for their well-being. Our campus stands apart from many others with a firm commitment to the environment and an environmental ethic that's a deeply ingrained part of college life and is visible almost everywhere you look. This ethic pivots around the key principles of preservation, conservation of our unique Sonoran Desert, its flora and fauna, and how we use these rich biological resources as amazing outdoor living labs and classrooms. We host many community events and are regular hosts to groups of school children, so they may learn about and value the organisms with whom we share our environment. Now, if you can't come onto campus for a visit, then we can come to you with an active outreach program using our live animal and plant collections. We recognise that the young people of today will be the decision makers and leaders of tomorrow. By sharing with others the importance of our biological resources, we hope that they'll learn that today, more than ever, our well-being is dependent on the well-being of all the species around us. So join me for a short tour of the beautiful Mesa Community College at Red Mountain Campus. See some of what we've achieved and meet some of the amazing organisms that call this their home. A cienega is a natural desert spring or marshy area found in the southwest deserts. Cienegas are critical wildlife habitat and provide vitally important ecosystem services, such as cleaning water and replenishing groundwater supplies. This is Datura reitii, or the sacred Datura. And it's got these amazing large leaves, which is not characteristics of plants that you would expect to see in the desert but it's related to potatoes and tomatoes. It's in the Solanaceae. But unlike potatoes and tomatoes, this is not a plant you're gonna to want to eat. The leaves are loaded full of alkaloidal toxins. And if you do munch on some of it, it will cause liver damage. And if it doesn't kill you, then it will give you hallucinations. And it was used by Native Americans in different ceremonies to induce hallucinogenic trances. So, but there are some insects that can feed on this plant. There's a moth and a beetle, and they seem immune from the alkaloidal toxins. And as you can see from this beautiful white flower, it attracts hawk moths at night that have enormous long proboscis that can reach down to the bottom of the flower. There is no plant more iconic of the Sonoran Desert than the saguaro cactus. And saguaro cacti are supremely adapted to the desert environment. They don't have leaves, in fact their leaves are now modified into spines, which are the petioles and what you see on regular leaves. That way they don't lose water through their leaves. Their entire stem is one huge water storage tank. And after a huge rainstorm, a saguaro that's been in drought can take up to 200 gallons of water. The pleats in the stem enable the saguaro stem to expand and contract with water gain and water loss. It has a unique kind of photosynthesis that means that the tiny little pores in the stem, which open to allow carbon dioxide in to photosynthesize, they only open at night. That allows carbon dioxide in at night and it allows some water to escape, but it's cooler and more humid at night, so they lose less water that way than all of the other plants around you, which open their tiny little pores called stomata in the daytime. Now, where I'm standing, I'm standing on its roots. And in fact, the roots are very shallow underground roots and spread away from the plant about as far as the plant is tall. And those very shallow roots enable it to catch the very little rainfall that might fall in a gentle rainstorm. Whereas deeper roots, which it does have, can collect that deeper water underground. So what looks like a baby saguaro isn't a baby at all. This saguaro might be between 20 and 40 years old. Now, although they're difficult to age, we get an idea of their age simply by their height and where they're growing. 
So a saguaro without any arms that's still pretty tall might be up to 80 years old and the very, very old ones might be two to 300 years old. Now this 20 to 40 year old saguaro is growing underneath this creosote bush for very good reasons. The seeds need to be dropped underneath a nurse plant and many of the shrubs on campus act as a nurse plant and that provides the correct conditions, a correct microhabitat of temperature and shade and moisture and humidity to give the seedling, as soon as it germinates, the ideal place to get hold. Now a saguaro that's maybe five years old might just be about that tall, maybe five to 10 centimeters, but they are absolutely dependent on these nurse plants to take a hold and establish themselves until they're maybe this tall. So this is Laria tridentata or creosote bush, and it's the most common shrub on campus. Now these shrubs growing in the group that I'm standing in may be the clonal descendants of an individual plant that grew here hundreds of years ago. Now creosote bush was used ethnobotanically by the people that lived here to help cure infections and subsequent research has shown that there's a substance in the leaf called nordihydroguyuretic acid that has very potent antifungal and antibacterial properties and the native people would take the leaves, grind them into a mush and then pack it into a wound and it would help cure that infection. Now when it rains in the Sonoran Desert there's a very um, noticeable smell in the air and it comes from the volatile compounds in the leaves of creosote bush. So we owe our beautiful smelling air after it rains to this amazing plant. This incredible species, Olnia tesota, which is the desert ironwood, is by far my favorite Sonoran Desert species. Perhaps the most remarkable thing about this plant is its age. And they're very difficult to age because you can't age them using normal growth rings. They don't put on a growth ring every year and you can't take increment cores from them anyway because the wood is so hard and dense. A tree like this of this size may be 800 years old and we've got about 20 of them on the Red Mountain campus and they all grow along seasonal flowing washes. So these washes are vitally important water source for these plants. Now the ironwood acts as critical habitat for many birds, but the one I'm sitting under is habitat to a pack rat, Neotoma. And they build these middens, which to you just might look like a pile of junk under the trees, but this may have been successively occupied by subsequent generations of pack rats for the past 500 years, and they pass them on from one generation to the next. And they build this midden to protect themselves, and they actually live in burrows that go under the plant. Now the pack rat uses the ironwood tree as its food source and at night time they come out and they clamber all over the branches and they eat the leaves and in fact the entire architecture of this plant is determined by the pack rats as they trim year after year after year. Again many thanks from all of us at the Red Mountain campus to the North American Native Plant Society for this award. We plan on reinvesting the award by purchasing more native plants and making this wonderful environment an even more amazing place to learn.